In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, we come together to celebrate this Mass. Let us first call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, by whom we are redeemed and receive adoption, look graciously upon your beloved sons and daughters that those who believe in Christ may receive true freedom, and an everlasting inheritance. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, knowledge inflates with pride, but love builds up. If anyone supposes he knows something, he does not yet know as he ought to know. But if one loves God, one is known by him. So about the eating of meat sacrificed to idols, we know that there is no idol in the world, and there is, and there is no God but one. Indeed, even though there are so-called gods in heaven and on earth, there are to be sure many gods and many lords, yet for us there is one God, the Father, for whom all things are and for whom we exist, and one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom all things are and through whom we exist. But not all have this knowledge. There are some who have been so used to idolatry up until now that when they eat meat sacrificed to idols, their conscience, which is weak, is defiled. Thus, through your knowledge, the weak person is brought to destruction, the brother for whom Christ died. When you sin in this way against your brothers and wounded their consciences, weak as they are, you are sinning against Christ. Therefore, if food causes my brother to sin, I will never eat meat again, so that I may not, be, may, so that I may not cause my brother to sin. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Guide me, Lord, along the everlasting way. Guide me, Lord, along the everlasting way. O Lord, you have probed me and you know me. You know when I sit and when I stand. You understand my thoughts from afar. My journey and my rest you scrutinize. And with all my ways you are familiar. Guide me, Lord along the everlasting way. Truly you have formed my inmost being. You knit me in my mother's womb. I give you thanks that I am fearfully, wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. Guide me, Lord, along the everlasting way. Probe me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. See if my way is crooked and lead me in the way of old. Guide me, Lord, along the everlasting way. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. 
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, To you who hear, I say, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. To the person who strikes you on one cheek, offer the other one as well. And from the person who takes your cloak, do not withhold even your tunic. Give to everyone who asks of you. And from the one who takes what is yours, do not demand it back. Do to others as you would have them do to you. For if you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners do the same. If you lend money to those for whom you expect repayment, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners and get back the same amount. But rather, love your enemies and do good to them, and lend expecting nothing back. Then your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High. For he himself is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful just as your Father is merciful. Stop judging, and you will not be judged. Stop condemning, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and gifts will be given to you. A good measure, packed together, shaken down and overflowing, will be poured into your lap. For the measure with which you measure will in return be the measure, will in return be measured out to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be. Our Gospel reading today really talks about generosity and forgiveness and mercy and living our faith in an uncultural way, if you will. But the thing is, when we hear Jesus talking about forgive and you'll be forgiven, don't judge and you won't be judged, he's not talking about people not judging us, he's talking about God not judging us. And I think this is what is so crucial, is because so often our reason for loving and forgiving is not that we will be loved and forgiven in this life by people around us, it's that it will be by God. And this is where our first reading really kicks in when we talk about knowledge. Because St. Paul is making it very, very clear that we can know things, but if it's just knowing things, that inflates our pride. But love builds it up. Thus, we need to have this loving relationship with God the Father so that the knowledge won't inflate our pride and harden our hearts. We need to have this loving relationship that we can truly live this gospel reading in authenticity and recognize that the sacrifices we make are truly worth it. St. Paul gives the example in our first reading to the Corinthians about meat and not eating meat sacrificed to idols because back then there was a tradition of eating meat sacrificed to idols in order to gain strength and blessing from these demons. And he makes it very clear that most are not able to eat meat sacrificed to idols because their conscience is so weak they'll be defiled, they'll fall back into idolatry. Thus St. Paul says, I will never eat meat again so that I will not cause my brother to sin. I won't eat any meat if it causes my brother to sin. And for St. Paul, is he sinning by eating meat? No. Is he going to be condemned and judged by God for eating meat? I don't think so but he willingly takes on the sacrifice so that his brothers, who he may never have recompense, he may never know the fruit of it, may not fall into sin. So great is Paul's relationship with God that he recognizes the great blessing of God and has no problem giving up eating meat. And I think for each of us, there are many times when God calls us to give up things that aren't bad in themselves in order to give greater witness and greater example. I think in many ways God calls us to live an extraordinary life, at least in the eyes of the world, so that we may live an ordinary life in the grace and light of heaven. And that is what is required. In order to be ordinary Catholics in the light of heaven, we need to look extraordinary in these days. 
and for each of us to have that loving relationship with God when we realize the blessing and the purpose and the cause of our enthusiasm is so crucial here. There are so many people who start out with great zeal and burn out. And I think for us, we need to really be authentic. We, we can't continue to have a white-knuckle faith where we continue to just feel like we're hanging on by a thread or that we're near exhaustion all the time. We need to have a faith that is overflowing and abundant. I mean, Jesus makes it clear in our Gospel reading that he wants his grace to be overflowing, packed down, measured out, you know, poured upon us. And this is the goal, that the love of God is so present and near to us that we have this knowledge and experience of the love of God in a daily way that we can't help but make those sacrifices. We can't help but be there for our brothers and sisters. I marvel a lot of times at the charity of people who do not believe in God. You know, there are a lot of people who proclaim themselves to be atheists, and sometimes they seem more charitable than Catholics. And I ask them many times, you know, why, why be so charitable? Why be so helpful? And their reason is because they believe that we literally only live once, that our lives are very temporary, that the only chance we have to make things better is right now and here and now, so they're going to do it because pretty soon they figure they're not going to exist anymore. And that becomes their motivation, that they have this limited time window and that's it for people who are truly atheists. Now granted, there are good atheists and bad atheists, there's no doubt, and we pray for all of them for their conversion. But what is our motivation? Is our motivation earthly? Is our motivation based on the esteem of others? Or is our motivation based in heaven? Is our true enthusiasm based because we see fruits in this life? Or is it based on something higher? Guide me, Lord, along the everlasting way, was our psalm. And I think it's so important that we really pray that God will, God will guide us along the everlasting way. Not just a temporary way, not just a, a human way of getting by, but the everlasting way. And if the everlasting way requires us to have some penances and sacrifice in this life, praise God, because we know that there's a deeper purpose and a deeper goal out there. I think for each of us, it is very easy for us just to downshift, to downshift into cultural expectations. But I think we see how much that is fleeting, how much that falls apart. In so many ways these days, we live for so little. We live with so little intentionality. We're just trying to get by. We're just trying to survive when God desires so much more for us. Maybe that's the good news these days that the church can truly proclaim from the rooftops, that there is a deeper purpose and meaning, and it is a real relationship with Jesus, with God in heaven, with the saints, that we can truly realize that there is more to this life, there is more to us, and that love is truly for us more important than knowledge, that love is more important than economic or material gain, that this love is something that we are just coming to understand because it is something of heaven and not really something of earth, if you will. So as we pray this Mass today, let us pray for that deeper conversion in our own hearts. And let us pray that we will be inspired in the ways that God calls us to be a little extraordinary, that we may truly come to recognize the good things that God has for us. It's just kind of an aside. One thing that I was inspired to do when I got ordained a priest was to give up alcohol. And for me, it was really no big deal. As many of you know, I had migraines pretty hard when I was in high school and college, and I couldn't drink anyway, so it's not like I really had a taste for it. But I gave it up because I just recognized so many people suffering from alcoholism, so many marriages being destroyed by it. And I thought, how can I have a beer at a party when I know it's destroying that family? And so I've continued to do that where I will be at parties, and of course the guys will always be offering me beers like any other guy. And they will be stunned, almost insulted when I refuse. And then I explain to them why. And i got to tell you, that has led to more confessions, more people going to church than I can count right now. And it's something so simple, so easy. And I think for us, oftentimes God calls us for those simple, easy things 
to really help us to be a little extraordinary, that we may be able to preach the gospel, that we may have a little more street cred, if you will, with those who are falling to the wayside, so that they may be lifted up once again. So in this Mass, let's pray to be inspired. What are the little extraordinary things that we're being called to do to help inspire others to be inspired by God? And let us offer our prayers and petitions. We pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, our Bishop William, all priests, deacons, all who serve in the church and our communities, that we will be ever more faithful to the way that God calls us to live and to receive his sacraments. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Pray for all the sick and suffering, all those who have hope, those who do not believe in God and those who care for them, that they will know Christ's healing touch. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Pray for our parish communities, our own families. We pray that we may have a greater zeal in our love towards God and one another, that in living a bit more extraordinary, at least in the eyes of this world, we may truly be ordinary in the grace of heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who have died, all those who will die this day, that they will know God's eternal love, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for hearing our prayers. Help us to be ever more filled with zeal for the grace of heaven, that our true motivation may be a heavenly one, and that we may be purified by any earthly motivation that keeps us from truly knowing the love of Christ. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. The Lord, accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all, his holy church. O God, who give us the gift of true prayer and, and of peace, graciously grant that through this offering we may do fitting homage to your divine majesty, and by partaking of the sacred mystery we may be faithfully united in mind and heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. His death we celebrate in love. His resurrection we confess with living faith. And His coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints we praise you, as without end we acclaim Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, 
by the same Spirit graciously make holy. These gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come, until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed Apostle and glorious Martyr, St. Joseph, her most chaste spouse with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen, grace to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind of to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, to whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. 
Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that, by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Peace to the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. given to us at Mass, may be extended to you as well. Let us pray. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there, and unite myself wholly to you, Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Grant that your faithful, O Lord, whom you nourish and endow with life, 
through the food of your word and heavenly sacrament, may so benefit from your beloved Son's great gifts that we may merit an eternal share in his life, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of Heavenly Hosts, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Have a good day, everybody.